Boom. That was supposed to be a high five. That was kind of whack. <laughs> well, I know you were trying to like get me to stand up. All right, we're gonna light some fire here. All this free wood too. Explain how we got this. We were some scavengers. Actually, we did a good thing for Mother Earth and the good state of Arizona. Cleaned up some trash. Yeah, don't be that redneck that comes out here to have a pallet party and just leaves all your mess for somebody else. Also, I hate burning pallets because of the nails. Yeah, yeah. We were careful where we placed the truck to get them. So yeah, we scored 14 pallets and cleaned up a bunch of trash. Got two birds stoned at once. It was a beautiful thing. <laughs> But yeah, guys, welcome to the Adventure Daily Podcast. This is only the second time, I think, that we did a podcast. Kind of talked it up a little bit and then never followed through. I think that's kind of a lot of the story with Adventure Daily, man. We're all <laughs> over the place here. That goes back to the roots of attention deficit. <laughs> yep, that is how we started out. But I think the main premise of this video is going to be talking about one of the most asked questions that we get. People go to the website find the email, ask us all the time about beginner bikes, what first bike to choose. And I kind of get frustrated at that question a little bit because a lot of the times they're missing out on the main premise. Well, what are you going to be riding in the first place? Yeah, I think it comes down to experience and terrain. <laughs> I think a lot of the times the questions that we get are focused towards me. And usually it's my wife or my girlfriend wants to get into riding. Sometimes they explain, you know, their X height and we do this kind of riding and their experience level is this. But again, yeah, there's a lot of variable factors that go into that. I would be very specific if you do ask me the question because I can give you a very specific answer because over the years we've accumulated a lot of knowledge of bikes and, you know, I'm really not biased. If you look back on the channel, I've owned a bike of pretty much every brand, yeah. even freaking Suzuki. I mean, I was we just suit that low. <laughs> I was going to say, what about Suzuki? But you have, you have. We had the old DRZ. I actually did enjoy the DRZ. Yeah. But I think the biggest comparison and a video that people want to see, we've had a lot of comments recently, is her beta cross trainer and the CRF 250F. Yeah, I think we get a lot of questions once we come out here because I don't have my cross trainer with me. So I think people automatically assume that I like the 250F better, but different bikes for different reasons. Well, a lot of people actually think that you sold it. Yes, so do you yeah. still have it? I still have it. I still have it. Do you still have your KTM? I still have the KTM. Oh, interesting. <laughs> actually, we were really close to bringing those bikes on this trip. But at the end of the day, it comes down to versatility. So yeah. out here, we like to do a lot of road riding, connecting rides to trails. I mean, hell, we've even done some longer road rides. Absolutely. I mean, Hour or more. I don't think a lot of people would consider that long. But hey, for a dirt bike, that's pretty long. Yeah. I mean, I would say we don't just ride it five minutes into town. I mean. Yeah. We, we've put some road miles in. So the four-stroke is obviously better for that. But. Let's talk about that. The Beta Cross Trainer and the CRF 250F. Both very different bikes, but why is it in the topic of conversation? Why are those two bikes put together, you think? Because they're both beginner-oriented bikes. And then specifically into that, I think they're also good female-oriented bikes, mainly because of their sizes and weight and etc that make them better for smaller shorter riders i definitely wanted to get alexis involved in this because how tall are you five foot she's five foot wah, wah, even, wah. five foot zero so me to come on here and talk about beginner bikes for shorter people you could ride anything <laughs> yeah but i can recommend it because i've you know had to live through alexis and go through this journey of finding her the perfect bike which i think we've got it pretty dialed in now i think i do happy. Yeah, so you actually started out on a CRF 230L. That was the first dirt-oriented bike. Yes, it was the dual sport version, so it was street legal out of the box. And we never took the time to properly <laughs> set it up. I mean, she went out there on a ride with the stock garbage tires, and that was interesting. But she never really liked the bike because we never set it up for you. But behind us, we have her 250F. That's all completely set up for her, sprung to her weight. We've got, you know, the proper tires on there for the kind of riding that we're doing. And, yeah, overall setup is everything, which we'll talk about that too. But, yeah, the 250F and the cross trainer. Can you bring up the seat heights? I don't remember off yeah. the top of my head. But they both have lower seat heights. So that's why it's a topic of conversation with beginner riders. Because the cross trainer, I will say, I mean, it's a hell of a bike. It is not a beginner bike, per se, but it has some features, one of which being the low seat height, that make it appealing to beginner riders. 
So the Beta Cross Trainer has a seat height of 35.8 inches. 35.8. And the CRF 250F has a seat height of 34.8 inches. So it is exactly an inch difference. Now in my case, my Beta Cross Trainer is lowered. However, the suspension is not sprung for my weight. Whereas on my CRF 250F, it is not lowered, but the suspension is done for my weight. Shout out to Bruce's suspension. <laughs> Correct. We love you, so, Bruce. So, um, I would say for me right now, they are probably just about equal when I sit on them as far as where my feet touch the ground. Even at five foot, my feet are tiptoeing on the ground on both sides, but better than what I've done in the past. Man, we feel official right now. Is it the I mic am. setups and everything? I am. Guys, we'll get some multiple camera angles going in the future, <laughs> but for now, this is what you get. And also, we're extra official because we even have a sponsor of today's video. Shout out to Onyx Off-Road. Onyx Off-Road is a GPS app made specifically for riders. They have filters built in for dirt bikes, ATVs, side-by-sides, and even snowmobiles. Furthermore, they offer those filters to be color-coordinated for difficulty. So green being the easiest, blues moderate, black for difficult and Tanner's favorite red for extreme. If you're unlike Tanner and more like me, you like to plan your routes ahead of time. Onyx makes this easy by showing you where the gas stations are, the camping places, trailheads, and more. Now to get out there and have some fun, be sure to use code ADV20, all lowercase, to save 20% on your Onyx off-road membership. Moving back to the cross trainer and the 250F, why would you choose one over the other? Oof. I think it definitely comes down to your style of riding and the terrain. Experience level too. Yes, and that. I mean, if I had to choose one, but there's, there is a lot of factors that go into that. I think we can, I mean, first start out two stroke versus four stroke. I think those are two very big differences. Right, so I'll say this, if you have zero riding experience, none, I would probably recommend you start on the 250F. Yes, I would agree. It is a much more forgiving bike in the way that it delivers power it is easy to ride i can pretty much throw anybody on a 250f and teach them how to use the clutch and control the throttle in the matter of 10 minutes and get the hang of it versus i would not want to do that on the cross trainer the cross trainer just has too much power to throw somebody on right off the bat and expect them to have a good time the power delivery mm -hmm. of the beta cross trainer mm -hmm. though i mean it has a lot of power but it is a very smooth, consistent power compared to hopping on like a 300 double R race bike. It is very different <laughs> and it makes it a good beginner bike for someone that does have experience or rides a certain kind of terrain. Correct. And if you look at the cross trainer, the pipe design is a key factor on why it has a smoother power delivery. It has more of a trial style pipe. It's a lot more compact. It doesn't have that large expansion chamber like you see on the 300 R or other bikes in that category. Even the frame size. Yeah, the frame size. I mean, you itself. hop on that and you look like you're on a trials bike. On the old so, bike. yeah. So I would say even the frame size mm -hmm. is definitely, I don't want to say more trials oriented, but aimed for smaller framed riders. Yeah, and the power delivery is really smooth. It does a good job of getting power to the ground. You know, two strokes, I will say, are known for the power band. If you've heard anything about two strokes, I'm sure that you've heard of somebody talk about the power band, and that's a certain range in the RPM where the power really kicks it up a notch. And, you know, we've rode plenty of bikes that had that. Mm -hmm. The cross trainer is really not like that. Don't get me wrong, the, the power is there. I was going to say, it's there when you want it. <laughs> or you know, maybe if you don't want it, but it's there. <laughs> drop a gear, click that thing down, and, and disappear. That was so <laughs> cheesy. <laughs> it's not cheesy if you can see that thing on her ankle right there. <laughs> We're going to switch legs. <laughs> but, you know, if you get it higher in the RPM range, there is plenty of power. So the four-stroke characteristics. The four-strokes, you can get away with a lot more. You know, there's more clutch work involved in the two-stroke, where the four-stroke, you can be in second, third gear. And as long as you're rolling in most situations, you're gonna be able to find some power right away just by blipping the throttle to get you over the obstacle. Yeah. Then, I mean, one of the biggest things with two-stroke and four-stroke is mixing of gas. Along with mixing of gas, then you have more maintenance with a two-stroke. Kind of goes back to talking about absolute beginner bike, not a lot of experience. Again, the 250F is a lot less maintenance. It's a Honda. Just keep some oil in there. Once a decade, change it, and you'll be good to go for a number of years. I'm serious. I mean, 
my cousin Austin, we, we grew up riding this little CRF 50 and the amount of abuse that that bike has been through with probably a handful of oil changes. I mean, we're talking like almost two decades <laughs> that that thing has been abused and it still runs, which is pretty amazing. So the 250F shares a lot of the characteristics like of the old XR and being an air-cooled engine, you don't have a radiator, you don't have coolant. There's a lot less to go wrong. Really, the only thing you need to do is change the oil maybe some chain maintenance now and then, put gas in it, air filter. But other than that, they're gonna run for a very long time versus the two stroke. You're you have gonna to have do to do all of that. Plus, yeah. Top end rebuilds, piston, rings, eventually getting your cylinder redone. There's a lot more involved. And we actually went through the process of deleting the oil injection in her bike, so. What year did that start? The cross trainer's always been like that. Oh. We actually deleted that for the sake of reliability. There had been some known issues with that system and with some of the electronics failing, which can smoke your entire engine. So instead of worrying about that, we just went back to the stone age and we mixed gas for her bike. It's a very, I don't know, luck of the draw kind of situation. A lot of people are like, oh, I've had my bike for this amount of time and I've never had any issues. It's great, but <laughs> you mean you're flipping a coin when something like that happens and it's kind of a big result of if it does happen. So not worth the risk. So we decided to take it out of there. Especially if you're far from the truck, that would not be fun pushing your bike all the way back. And you just want to give yourself as much chance as possible to get back yeah. at the end of the ride and not have to worry about things. So. Yeah, those were kind of the, the key differences that would matter as far as the two-stroke versus the four-stroke. The four-stroke, in this case, is definitely more forgiving. And when we're talking about four-strokes, there are plenty of other four-stroke beginner bikes. Mm. Talk a little bit about your 350. So we actually bought a pair I... of 350s um, oh, here. the second time we were out in Arizona. Yeah, we, we got a pair of 350s. I had the FE350. She had the XCFW 350. What were your experiences like with that? Well, I was going to say the other big difference between a two-stroke and four-stroke is engine braking. Oh, yeah. I hated that bike because of the engine braking. Very dramatic engine braking. Yeah. I mean, in addition to other things I did not like about the bike, besides the fact that it was extremely big for me. But yeah, I think the biggest thing was the engine braking. I had previously rode the 300 XCW two-stroke, so same size to that but no engine braking and i really think the engine braking was very hard for me to adjust now yes this is a four stroke and it has engine braking but the comparison between this kind of engine braking and then the 350 was it is very different it's night and day i mean you get off of the clutch that thing can almost bring you to a stop yeah that was very dramatic. Yes. I, do I mean, I would that. take a corner, and if I was not going fast fast enough, it just <laughs> stopped. It's just a lot different. I would say it, it takes a lot more work to ride in the technical stuff. Versus... I was going to say, it comes down to experience. Exactly. I just did not have the experience to be riding that bike. And the cross trainer is way easier to ride in the technical situation. So determining factor yes. in all this is the terrain. Your, how you're going to be riding your bike. So that's the first thing. We like to do some technical riding. I mean, you've done some gnarly stuff early yeah. on in your riding career. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> we kind of put you through the ringer, like from day one. Yeah, I've taken some tumbles. Yeah, she bounces pretty well, thankfully. No injuries yet. I, uh, Only from skateboarding. I took, that. I took all the injuries for you. Yeah. So if you're going to ride some technical, gnarlier Single style. Single track. You know, you want to do hill climbs, you need a little bit more power, and you have maybe a little bit of riding experience. You've used the clutch before. You probably would be happier on the cross trainer if you don't mind the little bit of maintenance. Yeah. Out of the box, too. Let's mention that. Like, the cross trainer out of the box, it's got way better suspension. The 250F is very beginner-oriented, so the suspension is way too soft which as mentioned we have upgraded out of the box you're gonna have a way more capable bike with the cross trainer so if you do plan on riding gnarly stuff and you're willing to spend the extra money we should also mention that you're Price gonna spend difference. you know a few thousand dollars more on the cross trainer than the 250f yeah i think that's a big thing with a beginner Absolutely. too maybe you're not even gonna like riding so you're gonna make this huge financial investment and buy this cross trainer all the gear and everything you might not end up yeah. liking it and the resale on the 250F, I will say too, would be a lot better. Yeah. You're gonna have a lot easier of a time selling this bike. So 
keep that in mind if, if you're a new rider and you don't know for sure that you're going to love it. I would also say that if you do have experience and you also ride single track and are in that style of riding, but you've never ridden a two-stroke, you might want to go see if you have a buddy that has one or if you can go test ride one because it just might not be your thing. I feel like there are people out there that don't like two strokes. They just don't like the feeling of not having engine braking, um, et cetera. So it might take a little bit of getting used to, but yeah, I mean, it is a big price commitment. So might want to test ride one. One eye Alex, hint, hint. <laughs> I had a buddy that we used to ride together a lot and uh, he was an experienced rider. He was a pretty good rider. He Absolutely. came out a couple of times. Road. <laughs> yeah, on the road. <laughs> but he came out a couple times in the dirt and did well. I mean, yeah. he could have definitely caught on, but he ended up going out and getting a 300 XC race bike pretty much. And he hated it. The lack of the engine braking that he was used to and the power band, it was one and done after that. He never yeah. came out again. So that's a big thing too. You want to have good experiences mm -hmm. your, your first time riding. Yeah. So definitely don't bite off more than you can chew. Which I learned with the 350. Yeah, the 350 was a nightmare. From the very first time I rode that bike, I didn't have a good experience. So therefore, it just continued to get worse. At the end of the day, why do we ride? We're out here to have fun. You want to set yourself up to have a good time. So why don't we have the X trainer with us now? We do some gnarly riding out here. The cross trainer. We don't have the cross trainer or I don't have my KTM out here because we don't have the room for multiple bikes. Trust me, if we had an even bigger toy hauler, I'd have the whole fleet out here. But between the Helix and the two 250Fs, we're pretty strapped for space. So this makes a really versatile bike. We have both of ours plated DOT tires. So we use them as dual sports. They're not dual sports from the factory, but pretty lax in Ohio. So we're able to get that job done, get the plates get the headlights, do the full dual sport build, and it makes for a very versatile bike. So also keep that in mind if you plan on getting it plated or if you have that option. This is just going to make a better dual sport. Can you do it on the cross trainer? Sure. Are you going to spend a lot of money in the long run? Yeah. I mean, more maintenance, more, more top maintenance. ends. <laughs> That's one thing to keep in mind. As a female, do you have anything else to say between the two? I mean, she had went to a, an all-female riding event. You want to talk mm -hmm. about that? I did, over and out. It was in Temecula, Pennsylvania. It's a great event. I was very nervous going into it, but I really do suggest that if you are a very, all the way from extreme beginner rider to even a very advanced rider, I recommend that you come. They do host a co-ed event in April, I believe, but other other events are all female oriented. I will say, besides the occasional like KTM, there there was a lot of cross trainers, and there was also a lot of 250Fs. So that gives you an idea of what are two very common bikes for female riders. There you go. <laughs> but I think if somebody were to ask me if I had both bikes to ride, especially when we're at home, I do choose my cross trainer probably nine times out of ten if we're gonna go on the trail and ride. If I'm going into town and going for a short ride or maybe we'll do a dual sport ride into town, 250F. So I think that really just comes down to exactly what the purpose is of the day that we're gonna go riding. Different strokes for different folks. And shout out to Beta for sponsoring over and out too. That's pretty cool. You got a chance to ride the, uh, what do they call their electric bike? I don't remember. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I know, me too. Kind of want to get my hands on one, so shout out to Beta if you see this. Hook it was, us up. It was very cool to ride that, actually. My friend actually got it stuck in reverse, and it doesn't have reverse, so. Mm, not sure they want to hear that, but <laughs> it did happen. We actually have that on video, we too. We do. I was actually going to make that a full video. I forgot that I never did I your wondered. whole ride on that. I wonder. Maybe I'll upload that. If yeah. you want to see that video, let us know. I have the whole experience from that, and her and Pauline, and that looked like a fun event, actually. I'm pretty jealous. Is it a very well-organized event? So we'll have to do the co-ed one someday, but I can definitely imagine it's a more chill vibe. You know, you mix a little testosterone into things, and... <laughs> Yeah, I can see why that event exists. Let us know what other bike comparisons you'd mm -hmm. like for us to do. I mean, we've rode a lot. I think I would say that right now in our current situation of life and how we ride, I'm very happy with both choices. I think the only thing that I would sometimes like is if this had a little bit more power on the road, but it's not a hindrance. And like I said, for what we do and what we use it for, it's perfect. Stay tuned for the next 250F update, too. We've got some final parts coming in for my build. 
that I think is really going to blow some people's minds. I'm very jealous. <laughs> I'm extremely jealous. So I hope you are prepared for round two. <laughs> well, actually be like round three after Eli's bike. So yeah. you're very experienced. So maybe you can just, you know, bust my bike out real, real fast. Yeah, I want to powder coat my frame too. So a lot of plans, a lot of more 250F content to come. So be sure you're subscribed for that. Once again, let us know what you'd like to see. We need to get out there and ride. I mean, I think people have this perception that I'm riding all the time because that's kind of what I do. But how often do I actually ride? Not very often, yeah. unfortunately. But there's a lot that goes in behind the scenes. A lot of time on the computer and all the other chores and hobbies. Wouldn't change it for the world, but never thought I'd be a desk job guy. So I'm looking forward to being here out west. As you can see, we're in a beautiful landscape. Endless miles of riding to do, so... We'll have to get on the bike soon, do a riding video. I hope this answered a lot of your guys' questions, but I think for the most common question, especially aimed towards female riders, this kind of covered it. Yeah, and there's a, a lot more beginner bikes to choose from, but these two options are pretty much at the top of the list. I actually took my rider's safety course when I was 15 with my mom and cousin and we did it on TW 200 so that's another bike that I would recommend definitely a more road oriented bike but another great starter bike I actually just recommended that just to say that. one of our friends so shout out to Jenny I definitely think she should get one really good beginner dual sport bike with the fact that you can buy these and you know do a dual sport conversion I definitely prefer this being fuel injected that's one thing we missed yes. too so this is fuel injected the 230F was not they updated this in 2019 so now we have fuel injection the cross trainer does not so a little bit more finicky with the carburetor on the cross trainer depending on what elevation you're going to be yeah. riding at so you might have some jetting and some tuning to do also carburetors get clogged you've actually done a carburetor rebuild i have on the 110 very professional once again a little bit more maintenance involved so if you're willing to take that on it's a damn good bike i would recommend it it's a lot of fun I enjoy hopping on that thing as small as it is for me in riding. I still have a blast on that, and I still have a lot of fun on the 250F. So both bikes can pretty much do the same thing. Yes. But, you know, one's going to be a little bit better than the other depending on what you're doing. Yeah, not to say that we don't do single track gnarly riding when we're out here and only have the 250Fs with us. We absolutely do. They're very capable. I was very pleased with how I did last year on some really gnarly, rocky single track, and this thing did phenomenal. Last minute mention the weight. They're very comparable. I think there's only a 10, 20 pound difference between the two. It was 20 or 25 ish pounds, yeah. which at the end of the day, this bike wears it well. Yeah, they both, um, like I said, with the cross trainer having a smaller frame, um, they both are easy to pick up being a smaller sized person. Yeah, so don't let that hang you up. You know, yeah. Don't focus on that weight number because she's able to pick up both relatively easily. I think that's it for good comparison if you made it this far in the video we appreciate you watching let us know if you want to see more podcasts yeah i think we should do some more i think so too i don't know if people like hearing our voices but <laughs> well they're going to subscribe if you're new leave a like all that good stuff and always remember to live free and adventure daily see you in the next one amazing i think so amazing